Ocean Nova was once in a lifetime. They're breaking new ground, making something meaningful. Mining methane hydrate frozen beneath the seabed. There's alternatives, but none so plentiful. It's clean and safe. I couldn't say no. February 2nd. We were 50 miles from the epicenter. But an 8 on the Richter scale makes that kind of distance irrelevant. Hold up. Something's off. You seeing this? <laughs> the shockwaves hit six minutes later, striking the south face of the hab first and hardest. 27 minutes in, with that kind of concussive force, even the sealed modules were compromised. After that came the ocean. By 1033, only safe havens in a sub or one of the suits. Check your gear, trust your training. It's one of the first things you learn. But the second they fail, you fall back on what you know best. For me, it's the list. This time, it wrote itself. Keep breathing, find others, and get the hell out. protocol for everything it has to be something to fall back on second guessing puts lives at risk so it's best to stick to procedure step by step so with an all hands call you head straight for compass one try and reach surface from comms Outside, the structure seemed intact. So I figured whoever's inside might. Well, maybe it's okay. We ran all kinds of drills. And you believe you know what to expect? But once I got inside, where it's familiar and you should feel safe, even though I had to, those first few steps weren't easy. Reaching the surface was off the table physically or otherwise. So it's simple. Hitch a sub to Compass 2 and hope others did the same. Normally, the habs are lit up top to bottom all the time. A lot of the gear was waterproof. Some of the lights and monitors were still running. So it wasn't dark, but it's fading. Like the whole thing's on life support. They're planning on 60, 75 once the whole thing's staffed up. So with just 20 of us, there's already this hollow quality. Like dropping by the office when everyone's gone for the weekend. Stand by five more minutes. Repeat, we are leaving in five minutes. If you're anywhere in range, right now is the time. In God we trust, everything else gets triple checked. But so much diligence makes every aspect of daily life heavy. Each task or item, like getting into a suit or going outside, has an equivalent weight. So, for getting cargo or yourself over to Compass 2, the shuttle's the most efficient option, relatively speaking. So I did. Thought about giving up. With that much time to think about nothing, just about anyone would. Thing is, the suit's designed to keep you safe, even from yourself. Makes it hard to take the easy way out. Still, does it... Does it make it better, knowing how bad things really are? The suit keeps out what you need to be afraid of. 
Only the fear is trapped in there with you, and it's thriving. So yeah, maybe you're safe and dry, but inside you're drowning. You were prepared, but what happened next caught you completely off guard. Can we talk about that? Sorry, um, can you repeat the question? Well, I was hoping you'd talk about the moment when you realized that the ones you collided with were, in fact, the ones you were trying to save. It was horrible. I mean, the odds of us finding them in the first place were poor. I sure as hell didn't expect to run into them. I... I don't know. I mean, I never found out who was in the other half of the wreck. Not alive, anyway. We were talking about protocol. By your own admission, there are instances where you didn't follow procedure. There's your radio and Cora. Granted, this was unprecedented. But as you said, second-guessing puts lives at risk. Do you think the outcome might have been better if you'd just followed the rules? Well, it might, but there's no way to know that. So you're lost and looking for some way out of all of this. And really your only option now is the other habitat, Compass 2. And what's most unsettling to, to me is you're in this dive suit. You call it a walking coffin. I can't even imagine what that takes. It takes everything. But when you're losing your strength and your senses, well, like I said, it helps you focus on what little's left. Even setting that aside, so much about your ordeal is almost beyond most people's comprehension. Were you ready for this? Or were you lucky? No. No luck. You mentioned possibilities. Does a part of you wonder where you'd be if you'd never gone down there in the first place? Not really. I, I mean... That kind of thinking won't get you anywhere. I'm not proud of some of the things I did. But I'm not leaving anything out. I can't. Methane is a greenhouse gas one of the most potent. Other industrial disasters may have been more severe, but Oceanova was groundbreaking, like you said. It could be years before we know all the consequences. We might never understand the ecological impact. It was very expensive, and 19 people died. Like it or not, you're the human face of all this. So what do you say to your critics? I believe in what we were doing. But was it worth the cost? You're an engineer. You're a problem solver. You value logic and precision. You talk a lot about times, distances, values. And yet there were some challenges you couldn't solve. Numbers are easy. It's people that are complex. Numbers bring things into focus no gray areas to distract you from getting things into perspective. Does it get easier answering all the same questions? Now, people ask all kinds of questions. What they ask says a lot about their character. Especially when it comes to casualties. So what's the response when they do ask about the gory details? I oblige. See which way they want to take it. I mean, what people don't get is that they don't want me to keep going. Not really. There's only so much blood and guts people can take before they lose their appetite. Everyone has their limits. You're very candid when describing some circumstances. Times when you felt crippled with fear, coming across the bodies of friends and colleagues? Yeah. 
it's clear you care, but there's an undercurrent of detachment in the way you present some of the more difficult moments. Was that your intention? No, I, I've heard that before. I just did my best to paint a clear picture. When it comes to empathy, there's no manual for that. I have to ask again. Was it luck? <laughs> Conditioning. Conditioning and discipline. It's how I got down there in the first place. And that's how I got out. It's about keeping tethered to the task. You don't let yourself forget about the reality around you. You can't. You saw terrible things. And even if you made it to the surface, you couldn't count on being rescued. I mean, I'd have lost my mind. Did you ever feel like you were losing it just a little? No. When they found me, I'd been floating on the surface for at least five hours. I talked with therapists and trauma experts for months. Said I was hiding the hurt. But it's not true. I made mistakes down there, yes, but did I lose my mind? No. No way. This entire experience is defined by the fact that you came back alone. Your story started with 20 people, but ends with one. So when it comes to telling those stories, you're the only one who can. Yeah. There's a responsibility to get things right. For the record. Welcome back to Open Air. I'm Emily Kaler. If you're just joining us, my guest is Kip Mattis, sole survivor of the Oceanova disaster. His first book, Hell or High Water, is a harrowing account of his ordeal. Earlier, we talked about the life aquatic, escaping the flooded habitat, and being lost on the seafloor inside a half-ton titanium diving suit. Kip, I know this might not be easy, but I'd like to talk about the end. Can you read that for us? Yeah. The list is getting shorter. The hatch opens with its usual reluctance, flooding the room with light. The pod is there. I'm going home. Tomorrow I'll be the sole survivor. But for now, I'm not alone. How did you feel when you figured it out? At that point, and that close, I was running on fear. So when I saw another suit in the room, it's almost too much to process. I couldn't believe that it was... Virgil? Is that you? Virgil made it. Just like me. How did you get... I thought everyone was... Only I'm locked inside the pod and he's locked out. Can you hear me? I can't stop the launch. There's no override. He's not coming back. Oh God, I'm sorry. And that's on me. There are seconds to evacuation. So are you saying that if you did something differently, that Virgil would have lived? That's right. Until I saw him, fear in his eyes, I thought I was the only one. It was a bad call. This can't be happening. didn't kill him. Really? Who did? Bad luck? I'm responsible. Look, I'm up here talking with you, and he's still out there. 